King's Highway, like most of the early Catholic churches after which its pattern is built in a cruciform plan, that is the shape of a cross. As we enter the front door, we are standing in the narthex, which makes up the base of the cross. In this area, we have a quarry tile floor and vaulted ceiling. The ceiling and walls are finished in stucco with wrought iron light fixtures made in Belgium, especially for this building. The style of fixture is consistent throughout the sanctuary. Looking through the double doors into the main sanctuary, we see the head of our cross. And it's in the baptistry. It is the baptistry spot in which the church reminds us of the shining new life one experiences upon baptism. The large arch in front of the baptistry encloses three smaller arches symbolizing the Trinity. The numerous small squares filling the space above the arches represent the thousand who became the church at Pentecost. Each square contains a circle or the never-ending love of God that is in each of us as we receive the Holy Spirit. Notice that each baptistry columns are topped with a Tree of Life motif. From this vantage point, we can also see the communion table. This table is an exact replica of the table shown in Leonardo da Vinci's painting of the Last Supper. The empty cross on the table symbolizes Jesus' triumph over death while the two lighted candles flanking the cross represent his never-ending life as the light of the world. This cross is a graded cross having three-tiered base denoting faith, hope, and love. These two structures, the baptistry and the communion table, are the two physical symbols of the two principal ordinances of the Christian church. To be baptized and accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, remembering Him through the communion service. Communion is served every Sunday and is the central focus of the worship service. As we move from the narthex into the main body of the sanctuary, the most outstanding architectural feature of this room becomes the apparent arches or gates. <clears throat> there are six ones lining each side of the sanctuary representing the twelve apostles, or perhaps the twelve gates mentioned in Revelation. Each arch has a keystone representing Christ with a total of four stones on their side representing the four Gospels. It is speculated the large supporting stones with their corners cut off symbolize martyrdom. There are two very large arches that appear to be support the main portion of the sanctuary. And two more to the entrances of the east and west transept. All contain a keystone depicting in Christ. The first of the central arches has 24 smaller stones around its sides and is reminiscent of the 24 elders in Revelation. The arch over the chancel steps contains six smaller stones symbolizing Christ and the Twelve Apostles, thus becoming the main arch in the sanctuary. At the top of the walls on each side of the chancel are matching symbols, a three-part triangle enclosed within a circle. This triangle is pointing upward and its point breaks through the outer rim of the circle. This upward apex symbolizes our attempt to reach God as we worship, while the broken circle indicates that man does not always keep his promises, and his love is not unending. Note the ceilings in all areas of the sanctuary, not containing open beams, are painted a rich heavenly blue. This original paint was last applied when the church was built in the 1920s. 
surrounding the baptistry are walnut screens, each containing the Alpha and Omega symbols, glass panels depicting in the Trinity, and circles expressing the never-ending love of God. Beyond the communion table is one of the most beautiful designs in the building. Named the Dialogue Mosaic, it consists of rows of triangles pointing downward, meeting rows of triangles pointing upward. The communication of God to man and man to God. The squares formed between the triangles symbolize the Christian life. The dark green unending marble surrounding the mosaic and the circle indicating the never-ending love of God when the dialogue is complete. One section of panels to the left of the back street is hinged. As I was saying, one section of the panels to the left of the baptistry is hinged to open to the back. In the days before air conditioning, this provided a ventilation system. One of the members owned a, an ice plant and furnished 900 pounds of ice every Sunday during warm weather. It was placed in the open in the panel and fans forced the air across the ice to blow out into the sanctuary. In addition, the columns forming in the gates down the sides into the sanctuary held small oscillating fans. There was there were also ceiling fans down in the middle of the room. It was still uncomfortably warm. The west transept, where the organ pipes are now, was originally in the choir loft. All the visible pipes are part of the new, new organ. We retained only the harp and chimes from the old instrument. The choir was moved to the area directly below the loft. The woodwork around the loft, the balcony, and in front of the chancel is decorated with the letter X. The Greek letter that is the first in the word Christ. The east transept contains a round window that is the only stained glass picture in the sanctuary. It displays the St. Andrew's cross with the red circle representing the shed blood of Christ. As we view the pulpit on the right side of the stage, we see that it is surrounded by wrought iron that again captures the Tree of Life motif. This, as all the other wrought iron fixtures, was made in Belgium, especially for this building. The exception is the matching wrought iron surrounding the lectrum on the left, made locally by Mr. Lloyd Holliday, a welder by trade. In fashioning this memorial to Alvin Blizzard III, who died as a child, Mr. Holliday also designed his own memorial. A plaque was placed on the uh, work by the church at the time of Mr. Holliday's death. Even the wood trusses and the beam ceiling bring to mind several images. Noah's Ark, the rough hewn construction that was probably like the table around which Jesus hosted the Last Supper. The main chandelier above the chancel area is a seven light fixture reminding us of both the beginning and the end, God's creation in six days and resting on the seventh, and in Revelation, seven angels who had seven bowls containing the seven last plagues. As we look out over the sanctuary, we see the Trinity represented at every turn. In the woodwork, in the windows, the light fixtures, the arches, and the mosaics. There are many items in the decor for which we can assign no symbolism or scriptural reference. There has been great effort put into the research and study, and we continue to research for additional answers. <laughs>